So I've been on YouTube now for six years, and over the years I have, I believe, 135 videos. Probably five of those are not dedicated to tile. Um, but most of them are, and over the years, you can imagine, I get a lot of comments, I get a lot of questions. In fact, I get a lot of phone calls and emails, too. Um, and I don't mind answering the emails and the phone calls. In fact, anytime somebody calls me, I always answer, and I always spend as much time as possible um, that, I, that I can spend on a phone call. Just to kind of eliminate some of the curious people out there about DIYers trying to do their own thing, and I don't mind that at all. Um, the emails I will answer, but generally speaking, I like a phone call because the email thing takes too long to type out and things get convoluted as far as what did you say? What do you mean by that? Da, da, da. So I don't necessarily push people to call me or to email me, they just do. So I entertain those phone calls and those emails um, as much as I possibly can, as I said. But Again, after six years of being on YouTube and answering a lot of questions on the comment section below, it's, it's kind of came to me that I could do like a Q&A type session. There are other YouTubers out there that do it quite frequently. The Q&A process would be a lot easier for me to do on video. Actually, it'd be better to do on a phone, but um, it's much better to do on a video than it is to try and answer all the comments below. There's some some guys out there, Tyler's included, who who will be rude and say, I've already answered that question, go look at my other videos, and you know, who wants to go searching around for that needle in a haystack? So if you have any questions that you would like me to answer on a video, then I'll be happy to do so. Most of the questions, as I said, I've already answered on the comment section, and those who email me or call me, you know, get an earful, which Again, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind entertaining those calls. But um, honestly, I have a, up in one of those corners up here, I have a PayPal account. I don't get paid off of YouTube. A lot of people do, but I don't. So it would be nice if, if you would send me a little something. I'm not asking you for a certain amount, but, you know, if I'm going to entertain your phone call, and I do talk a lot, then I would appreciate wherever it's at hitting the PayPal link, sending me a little something, again, whatever you think is fair, and then make the phone call. That would be nice. You cannot expect a dentist, a doctor, a lawyer, or any other professional um, to sit up there on the phone with you for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or whatever the way I do, and not get paid for that advice. So that's all I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to be greedy. All I'm saying is it takes a lot of time for me to explain things to people sometimes on the phone because I'm long-winded on the phone as I am on my videos. <laughs> and so that's just something that I'm kind of asking um, before you make the phone call. Anyway, back to the reason of the video. So the Q&A thing will be interesting. What I'm going to start doing is rather than answering all the questions on my videos, I'm going to pick out sort through a lot of the, the questions that people are asking on my videos and I will compile three or four or five different questions and I will answer them on videos that I will post on here. Um, so anyway, I don't, I don't know that I have a lot of questions. There's a lot of comments that are made. I get a lot of, a lot of rude, rude comments and as a rule I don't allow those comments. Um, I'm very adamant about no cursing People have left comments before that are automatically deleted before you even see them where they're cursing using curse words and slang and stuff like that. Not only, I mean, not only is it unprofessional, but this isn't, even though it's a social media venue, I don't allow curse, cursing, I don't allow smart aleck comments, and I don't allow unjustified critique. What I mean by unjustified critique is that some people will come onto my channel on certain videos and they'll post their opinion about a certain thing that I'm doing on that particular video. They'll say that I'm wrong, they say you don't know what you're talking about, you're a hack, you know, blah 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 blah. Then I go to their channel and I see they got videos about hunting and boating and other stuff that have nothing to do with tile. So it's not even a justified type of comment if you don't know what you're talking about. So, if you're going to make a comment, 
and you're another Tyler who disagrees with my method, that's one thing. But if you have nothing to show for what you say, you have nothing to back up what you say on your channel, then, yeah, why would you even post a comment? Like, why would you even post a comment? I'm not going to go on to somebody's channel that, you know, they're a tech person, and I'm not going to blast their advice about tech stuff when I don't really know about tech. I'm not an expert on tech stuff. I don't do tech stuff day after day after day every single day of the week. So then, how are you going to come on my channel and blast me, and you're not a Tyler? But I digress. I would rather, if somebody's going to critique me, I would rather have them pick up the phone. I am very easy to find. All you have to do is Google Star Tile. I mean, right there on the front of my video, on the back of my video, I have my business card and my email and my phone number is there. So if you have an issue with something I'm doing, a certain method, a certain way that I'm doing something, um, pick up the phone and call me. I enjoy a lively debate. I enjoy the banter that goes back and forth exchanging ideas. There are certain things that I have instituted over the years. I'm not doing tile the same way as I was 17 years ago, so obviously things have changed and I've grown and I've learned things and, and I incorporate those things into my work. However, there are certain things that just because the crowd does it or just because they're told to do it by certain entities, they just feel like they have to do it. They don't question the process. They don't question. They don't have the common sense to think through, man, this, this doesn't really make any sense, so then why should I do it? So when I do that, there are certain, the certain things that I'm telling you that I don't do because I'm opposed to them, because I've thought them through logically, and I don't believe in them. I don't believe that they enhance the job, they enhance my work, they enhance my knowledge in any, any way, shape, or form. In fact, just the opposite. Usually when I think things through, the people who told me, oh, you know, you're wrong for doing this, or you're wrong for doing that, I usually will make a video on a job that I'm doing, and I will answer why I don't do certain things. And then we'll go back and forth and back and forth and it gets heated and gets stupid and I just blow it off. So, again, if you disagree with the method that I'm doing, pick up the phone and call me. We can have a debate about it. We can talk about it. I'm a very rational person. I'm not going to get upset and hang up the phone or anything. Tell me your ideas. I'll tell you mine. We exchange, you know, we exchange ideas. That's the way usually things work. This isn't, this isn't, um what do you call it, like a, like a vlog or something. This isn't for entertainment. This is for educational purposes, for DIYers mostly. Not necessarily how to do things, but more specifically, how I do things. And when I'm making my videos, I explain why I'm doing them. Everybody out there has a brain of their own. They can think through things through logically and they can decide for themselves, this guy's doing it right, I want to hire him, this guy's doing it wrong, I, I would never let him in my door, whatever. They have that opportunity to do that. There's a couple other Tylers out there on YouTube where I see they make, in my opinion, major mistakes. Mistakes that I talk about on a lot of my videos. And it kills me that they're doing those type of mistakes that are obvious, like these guys, you know, I have a lot of respect for, and then I see them constantly do the same, the, the mistake that they're making, they make time and time and again, and I'm thinking to myself, well, how can they not logically think things through and realize that that is not a good way to do it? But I don't comment because that's their way. See, ultimately, the person that's watching this, that's trying to extrapolate information from videos, are going to see my way and his way and the next guy's way and, every, and think for themselves and decide if it makes sense. It has nothing to do with rules and regulations and this booklet and that manual and that club and this. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with things that make sense. So I'm going to start off answering a few questions off of one of my most popular videos. It's called, How to Convert a Tub to a Shower. 
I did that video about three years ago and there's quite a few comments on there. Um, one of them is from Joe Schmo. Joe Schmo asked me why I don't use Curdy. I don't use Curdy because I believe it's overkill. The Curdy Schluter products are very, very expensive. They are definitely not cheap. For example, to do just a standard 3x4 shower, the kit costs $350 plus at Home Depot. The kit doesn't include everything you need. By the time you get done, you're spending four, maybe $500 worth of material. Curdy Schluter has a good product for some other application. I don't know, I haven't figured out what application Curdy Schluter would be good for. I think on showers, it is overkill beyond belief. A gallon of Red Guard or a gallon of Aqua Defense or something like that is about $50, $52, $55 as opposed to that kind of money. I don't pay for materials, my customers do, but I don't feel, I feel it's unfair to spend that kind of money for a product um, when for a fraction of the cost you could be, basically be doing the same thing with a liquid membrane. Bamney Bomb, I hope I'm saying it right says, on the shower drain, you forgot to install the P-trap. The fumes from the sewer are going to enter the bathroom and create a chronic odor. Bamney bomb. I'm well aware of that. On a slab, the P-trap is below grade level. It's below grade So, on a slab, you don't see the P-trap. Therefore, you never saw one, but it's there. Leon Gomez ask me is there a code to how big the curb should be no you can have a very small curb you can have a very large curb but the curb needs to be high enough to keep the water in if your drain clogs up for whatever reason tom cartwright writes what are your feelings on hot mop versus pvc pan liner um i know very little about hot mopping even though I'm from California and apparently it's done quite frequently there, I have watched videos about it and it looks like you're getting ready to put a roof on, like you're tarring a roof. Hot mopping to me is extremely antiquated and it's a lot of work. And if we did hot mopping still today, um, as a rule, I would have to charge a lot more for my labor than what I do now. Hey Leo writes, how much does it cost to convert a tub to a shower? Leo, there's not even a possible way for me or any other tiler to tell you that. There's too many details to be had. Anytime a tiler has to give an estimate, we have to consider the age of the house because that's going to dictate how much of the tear out we have to do. Uh, the age of the house is also going to dictate what kind of pipes we're dealing with, whether they're copper, whether they're possibly PVC or in a lot of cases lately anyway, um, the mid-80s, mid-80s into the 90s, there was a lot of uh, polybutylene pipe. Um, and then, of course, there was cast iron and iron pipe, you know, prior to about the 1970s. So there's too many things to consider when given an estimate because on that tear-out it matters. Putting everything back together with the tear-out matters. Um, so the age of the house matters, the location, how far we have to drive back and forth, type of tile, design features, how you know much of in a hurry you are. There's a lot of things to consider. Um, as a general rule, for labor only, you're looking at somewhere at about the $3,000 to about the $4,000 range to convert a tub to a shower. But again, it depends on a lot of things. So it's really hard to answer. Cindy Parker asked me why I don't use Hardy Backer. Um, the backer board is irrelevant. When you're doing a um, topical membrane like Red Guard or Aqua Defense or any other topical membrane, even if it's Curdy Schluter, it doesn't matter what's behind it, right? It could be concrete, concrete block, 8 inches, 12 inches, 20 inches thick. It doesn't matter. Concrete block is still porous. Therefore, you still need to put Red Guard on it. If you use cardboard, you would still put Red Guard on it. If you use Dura Rock, if you use Hardy, you still put Red Guard on it. So anything that you use, you're waterproofing regardless of what you use. That's why I don't use Hardy. Hardy is very difficult to work with. 
So it's just my personal preference not to use Hardy Backer. I'm no genius, but I'm smart in spots, and I stay around those spots.